Rogue One got many, many biscuits. I was not necessarily expecting much after, obviously, the Force hit snooze. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the, the trailers for Rogue One didn't promise very much, but um, yeah, I went to see it and thoroughly enjoyed myself. Everything we've done up to this point in the podcast has been defined by like it's almost got the biscuit but didn't quite the, the biscuit is just a little bit away but you would actually go so far to say that Rogue One got it I think it, it got some biscuits I don't think it maybe got the whole plate of biscuits <laughs> <laughs> so it's a 2016 American epic space opera film directed by Gareth Edwards who <gasps> also directed Godzilla mm. which we fucking loved uh, it is the first installment of the Star Wars anthology series. It is a standalone film set immediately before the events of Star Wars Episode Four: yeah. A New Hope. So you, so you say a standalone film, it's not really standalone. If you take it of itself, it's like a story where they all die at the end, and that's kind of it, but it's not standalone. It's Star Wars Episode 3.9. Yeah. It's it's like within, what is it, days or minutes before the start of it, New Hope? Yeah, it's it's, a, it's ambiguous. You could There could be time between the ending and the start of A New Hope, but it seems quite heavily handed implied that it's pretty much a straight lead on. Rogue One received generally positive reviews, although some criticism was directed at its use of computer-generated imagery to recreate the likenesses of some dead actors. Yeah, I mean, the, the Moff Tarkin stuff, it's kind of, because it is episode 3.9, you couldn't have done it without that character. I would have been fine if they'd just cast somebody else who looked a bit like him yep. and did their best. Mm -hmm. The CGI, it's very, very, very good. It's yeah. super uncanny valley. Yeah. I, every scene he walked in, it's so, so lifelike, but just not quite there. The best way around it, I think, is make him a hologram. And I think with that static fuzz, he would have but looked again, though, perfect. It is, it is about, you know, the half-built Death Star. So yeah. Moff Tarkin would have been there. He would have been overseeing it. Getting an actor who looked close enough and there's mm. hand-waving it. Because we, we got we got a young Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan, so we've, we've already done this in this yes. series. We, we didn't have to, like, reverse engineer what a young Alec Guinness would have looked like. I actually thought that but again though with Leia they <clears throat> yeah. could just have shown her from behind with the buns and yes, the veil yes. and that's enough we yes. know that's Princess Leia yeah. it's, it's, it's an unnecessary thing and there are I guess that's the, the biscuit that Rogue One for me didn't get is there is a lot of unnecessary stuff the younger actors that this film is supposed to be about it's supposed to be their story yeah. get stomped all over at the ending because then it all just becomes about the Skywalkers again the story we're telling here really ends on the beach that is yeah. the ending the, the, the nuclear fire of the yeah, yeah the Death Star Standalone implies to me that this movie, you could see yeah. it's in isolation, so it could be your first Star Wars movie. So I felt that the way they handled Leia at the end, it relied too heavily on you knowing who that character was. Because it's, yeah. she has her line, we go to credits. Our big payoff is well, we, we also we dangle we yeah. dangle the carrot of Leia when mm -hmm. Bail Organa gets his two second cameo. Yes. And he says, I'll trust her with my life. And it, again, it's like, you it, didn't need that. Like, I thought if they had one guy yell out something, like, get it to the princess, she's in the cockpit. And that at least gives us some context yeah. to what that is. I, I don't mind the cameos. They're R2-D2 and C-3PO. It's a bit, ugh. But yeah. it's okay because it's a harmless cameo. Yeah. But this is the ending of the movie. And, and I think you either had to have that as a harmless cameo that happened before the beach scene. Or mm -hmm. if that's going to be your ending, we had to spend a bit of time with Leia to get us introduced yeah. and then off we go. It's, it's, it suffers a bit from the Lord of the Rings style too many endings. We, we need to know the plans got off world safely so Bucket Chain needed to get that disc onto that spaceship. It didn't need to go to Princess Leia at all. No, I agree. So, somebody needed yeah. to slam down an airlock, say go 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 and then the ship detaches, flashes away into hyperspace mm -hmm. with Darth Vader going Motherfuckers. Yeah. That's, that's all we needed. <laughs> like Krennic gets summoned to Vader's secret health chamber mm -hmm. for no particular reason and it's like actually yeah if, if like at this point vader is the henchman and he's in, the, in a new hope he is he's a henchman yeah. he's, a, he's an enforcer yeah. he's not the brains it's not his story his story's around this yeah this is the story of the people that went that got Va the, vader the is told to clean up this mess yes could you just have cut out that scene with um, him on the volcano planet uh, in the kind of the temple yeah. chamber thing if you could remove that completely from the film and then you have the f his first appearance be that corridor scene and that's it that's all you get yeah. I think that would have worked because yeah you could have yeah, if, if Tarkin's on the Death Star going everything's gone to shit get Vader. phones the Emperor <laughs> say it like <laughs> Emperor yeah bring me Vader <laughs> yeah get in, in case of disaster break glass yeah Vader comes Cause, 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 because Vader, Vader is the <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's the, he's the ultimate guy. henchman he's, he's yeah. the guy that when all else has failed he will get results because the corridor scene was so good 
this the, here in the breath the light yeah. up with a sort and it, it just and the way that he chopped the guy in half and the ceiling didn't shy away from the violence yeah. I mean it felt like a scary Lightsaber they made Scott's him a villain words. again <laughs> because in episode 3 he's so just yeah. not Vader and that was like if he had been doing that in episode 3 I'm gonna cut through 12 guys and not even think about it and you're like yes absolutely because that he's supposed to be this diabolically fascist evil prick yeah. and in that corridor scene it's all of that up to 11 and you're like yes and the guy is screaming save us help us and he's just going through them and it's that's a baddie yeah because the rebels the rebels have never faced somebody as terrifying as this before they're just yeah guerrilla foot soldiers who are you know, on the wrong side of the law i don't remember being afraid of darth vader as a child but i understood that he was a villainous threatening character yeah. And I can imagine a child being in the audience going, oh God, you know, watching that and being quite horrified by it. Particularly the guy screaming help us puts it over. This is a terrifying... He's not just a cool guy in a suit. He's bad. He is bad. And that, I think... The whole temple dialogue and his cheesy kind of don't choke on your aspirations scene is like, oh, yeah. come on, that's so cokey. That, Whereas the corridor is like, that's actual Vader. That's good yeah, stuff. The, yeah. the, the, he, he, he doesn't walk up the, the ramp going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> choke does. on your aspirations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going up to the canteen. You know what I said to him after I joked him? <laughs> and, the, and everyone in the canteen just has to laugh because it's Darth Vader. And I made her funny. You, know? if you don't laugh at Darth Vader's jokes. Then <laughs> <laughs> Your legs chopped off. So I thought that also that the, the scene was far too overlit. If Vader wouldn't have installed bright windows to let the sun in, Vader would have yeah. had like a kind of black, red, and grey with some kind of motif in that. I, I do, I do like a good industrial temple, but yeah, it wasn't. It seemed, yeah, it seemed crowbarred. I felt tonally this did not match the first three films yeah. but because it's supposed to run directly into the first three so now that's less a trilogy and more a quadrology because of what they've done with this yeah. the tone of Star Wars to me is swashbuckling action in outer space this did not feel like that at all swashbuckling is a bit harder to do without laser swords so yeah. since none of the characters were Jedi except uh, shoehorned in um, blind not Jedi crouching tiger hidden Jedi yeah, um, yeah. In the same way, this film, nothing really much happens for the first hour in this movie. In Aliens, uh, for the first 40 minutes, nothing happens because it's all set up. So basically, you're getting to know the characters. There's character scenes all over the place, so we get to know... And it is similar. They're both war movies in space. Yeah. They're they're colonial marines. These are rebels. But, well, you know, kind of this... Whatever. Like, yeah. you know, they've got guns, they've got helmets, they shoot things, and it's in outer space. Close enough. <laughs> you know, but the point I'm, I'm making here is that I felt that in Aliens that they did a really, really good job of giving everyone a character scene before we got mm-hmm. to the aliens turning up. So, therefore, when you've got, like, Bill Pax as Hudson, and he's given it, like, you know, you know, this is another bug hunt and all this, you, you feel like you know yeah. that character. And you're quite... You actually like him, so when he dies, it kind of means something and when you're losing those guys along the way in the the war context where it all kicks off you feel the emotional loss and the weight I felt that the setup scenes were not there in this and that hindered it a lot I kind of felt that there were too many characters as I say our blind Jedi kind of did nothing the characters were so shallow and poorly written that I was having to describe them as the Asian guy with a stick uh, okay, I'm saying Asian guy, but if those two Asian guys, you had the Asian guy with stick and Asian guy with big gun, yeah. if those had been two Irish guys, I'd have been describing them as Irish guy with stick and Irish guy with big gun. Yeah. And I think that that's not done correctly. If all you've got is their gender and their ethnicity to define but, them, uh, yeah, I, that I, I, I feel is very uncomfortable I, to as talk a, about. I'm not even sure it's a diversity thing. It's just <laughs> I think it was more of a we had to have some kind of mystical character because because it's Star Wars. I just right, want to clarify. Okay. In the same way, let's look at the Force Awakens. There's the scene where the Scottish guy turns up and yells at Han Solo for a bit. Millennium Falcon. I... And because all I know about him is the fact that he was the Scottish guy that yelled at Han Solo. I'm going to describe him as such. Yeah. Now that's fine because he's a three second bit of the movie, so that, that that's, yeah. it doesn't matter. But the problem is if you're if you're taking sixty minutes 
where not an awful lot's going on and somehow these character scenes yeah. aren't happening then when the everyone gets killed at the end the deaths don't mean anything because you haven't built it up but I think and they, I yeah. think if they had done what aliens did and took the time to establish those characters with scenes like Bishop gets the knife scene you know everyone gets yeah. a scene and you go I know who they are now but as I say I think it's because there's too many characters the, the cast yes. is too big it's too big uh, yeah. it's unnecessarily big mm. uh, but look, and, it, like, and it dilutes yeah. the people so, yeah. so it dilutes what we do have there's probably like 20 scenes in the cutting room floor with each of them and they were like yeah. well this isn't actually relevant to the plot and then we end up with sort of yeah, like a, like a spleen type or appendix oh, type character. That's that so, sort such of relevant. an irritating editing decision because it but is relevant. Somebody made it because it's there's, yeah. there's probably there probably is like a four hour cut of this film yeah. where there are a lot more of these build up scenes, yeah. but we've just decided that no, we were going for. Well, it is true. I mean, there's a bit in uh, in Aliens to, to come back to that. I mean, the, the 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 proper cut, the director's cut. There's the scene in that they didn't make it into the cinematic release, which was um, Ripley being informed about her child being dead. Because the idea was that when she's in cryo sleep, she outlives her own daughter, yeah. and the whole thing, the whole thing's a big metaphor for motherhood because yeah. she ends up finding Newt, and then you know the whole yeah. kind of get away Kills from her, you, you bitch. The thing is, it's kind of, this is what like uh, Rogue One's like to me. It's get away from her, you bitch, but without the setup to get us there. Because <laughs> get away from her, you bitch is a really cool line, but what makes it cool is the fact that Ripley is now going, "That's my daughter." And then after she kills the queen, Newt runs up to her and goes, "Mummy!" And you get that's the full payoff, yeah. and we're built to that. So it's not it's not just cool moments. They've got the setup, and Rogue One doesn't have any of that. I, I guess you know the Rogue One isn't like our Star Wars films in general are not necessarily that particularly character driven. The, the whole point of Rogue One is the Death Star plans. Like there, there is no I character payoff. So, okay, the, right. The, the whole point of the film is to get those plans. That that's that's the, the purpose of the film is not. So for... Han Solo in the first New Hope film is introduced as I'll shoot you first. I'm a rogue. Yeah. And his character art is to come back and save the day with a falcon at the but, end. But, and that means it's not character driven. It's obviously no, character driven. It's, it's not. You know the the whole. He's not the whole purpose of the film though. He he he's not everything. He, would, he is a would character. Would they have won? Would they have won without him? Maybe. Could they? Could Luke have got where he to go without the Millennium yeah. Falcon? Okay. <laughs> like, but, but, <laughs> the Rogue One, everyone dies, so... That, you that's can't the do that! You can't say everyone dies! <laughs> but the annoying thing is it rolls into New Hope so quickly, and because no one in New Hope references this yeah. battle, it feels like the D-Day landings, but then we just forgot about it. I mean, the battle and everything, it all looked great, it sounded yeah. great, but I just didn't think that the, kind of the heart and soul was there. Like, the way I would go back and watch Aliens is because I like the characters. Like, I like the way everything looks and I like the action, but I also want to be around See, those people. I, yeah. I, I, I guess I've got lower standards for characters than you. I, as long as I don't find them irritating, I'll, I will be fine, because I'm, I'm here for the spaceships and the robots and the lasers and the pew-pew. The robot was good. The robot was the spectacularly robot. good. The robot was the only death scene I actually cared about in the entire film. Because he did, he did get all his payoffs and stuff. You know, it was like you wanted a blaster, car- didn't you? He got character he, scenes. Yeah, he got. But he was fleshed out. Even though he was yeah. a robot, he had more to do. And he had like had all the best dialogue and the best lines. I just felt the like the beach scene because I think again it's a great idea. Much like the get away from her, you bitch. It's a yeah. great scene. Like okay, you've got these supposed kind of love interests. That are going to die together. Well, that's the, yeah, they, they've got. They could have been something, but it's too late because we're getting lasered to death by but a giant space station. Could we not have had some kind of scene where, like, okay, we both want to defeat the Empire for different reasons, but actually now we've been on this journey together, and because we've been around each other, we not only want to defeat the Empire for the sake of it, we also want to defeat them now because we want to be together, and we can't be together until the Empire's out of the way. The, the, <clears throat> the tension they were trying to add was between with Cassian's mission to kill off her dad before he could spill the beans. Yeah. But then he dies in the raid anyway, yeah. and it's like, what was actually like? So, so they sort of cut off that kind of whole thread. He could just have died in the bit where she's clambering up the thing and he gets yeah, shot. Yeah, he didn't need to come he back. He didn't need yeah. to come back because there, there wasn't any romance. Because there, well, really. that, and that's the whole point. We're like, yeah. if, you're, if you're going to build towards holding hands on the beaches, I mean, it's a great idea. Nuclear blast cloud oh, flying over, yeah. great shot. But we're let without the context. Yes. it doesn't mean anything and that's why I'm watching this going like this is a beautifully filmed brilliant scene but, but I was much more upset no when the robot died yeah. you know, and you're going this doesn't tally up and it was stuff like that that it, yeah. it kind of sucked my enjoyment of the movie away from me because when I was watching the battle going holy shit this is Star Wars as fuck yeah. but the problem was that the, but, but it didn't have any of the look I am your father kind of moments no. that, or, yeah like kind of 
the great idea, beach scene, tremendous, but there was not enough groundwork yeah, put in yeah. to get us to where we had no, to I, be. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think you could have got, you could literally have walked into the theatre in the last forty-five minutes, and that would have been enough. I didn't actually need the beginning of the movie yeah. because there was nothing in the beginning of the movie to get us to, to where I needed to be emotionally. Because it just decided, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. It's just all plot. We have to do the thing to get the thing to here to get the thing to there to stop this. And there's no actual emotion involved. That, I, mean, I, like, I like the I like <clears throat> the fact that it's you know they're, they're I like I like the, the the plot the narrative con- conceit of tracking of trying to you know find an informant to find a thing to find a like find a secret project that's all very spies and conspiracies and stuff. I, so I like that idea, but yeah, it was a bit roundabout. 